Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Ace Attorney Trilogy. Last time we cleared Case 1-1, and we're going to be moving on to Case 1-2 today. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, the cases get a lot longer, so I will be se segmenting them up into multiple videos. Uh, the game already does that, sort of, it's got a chapter system within each case, so hopefully it'll be one chapter per video, we'll see how we go. Anyway, let's get going. <laughs> okay, um... Hello? This is Maya. Hey Maya, it's me. Mia! What's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely, and it's all your fault. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favour to ask. I know, I know, you want me to hold evidence for you. Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So, what is it this time? It's... a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the Thinker, and it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey! I'm not a little girl anymore, sis! Now, now. You know I'm only teasing. Uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. Put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence, then? Hmm, well... There's a possibility that it might turn out that way. Yes, that line is supposed to be Mia's line. Th they've done that wrong. That's supposed to be Mia's line, not Maya's line. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Can you come by the office tonight, say 9 o'clock, to pick it up? I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. Like, burgers. I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay. I'll have hit the usual joint. Alright, it's a deal. Okay, sis. See you soon. Yep. I'll be waiting, Maya. Beep. <laughs> Conversation recorded. September 5th, 9.27am. September 5th. 8.57pm, Fay and Co. Law Officers. Now, Miss Fay, I'll take what's mine, the papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Fay, you're a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? <laughs> You are not cogniferous of my background? Gathering information is my business, you see. I... I should have been more careful. <laughs> my dear Miss Fay, I am so very sorry. But I'm afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Fay. <gasps> So, yeah, we see the murderer at the beginning again in this case. It's that guy. We won't know who he is for a while, though. Red. White. Blue. September 5th, 9.08pm. Fay and Co. Law Officers. Uh-oh, I'm late. Huh? That's strange. Guess the chief left without me? She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go out for dinner. What's that smell? Blood? Mia! Maybe she's in her office. Okay, so this is the other half of the game, basically. You have, um, investigation and you have courtroom segments. The courtroom segments are significantly better. Uh, the investigations aren't great in this game. And 
They get better over time. They're kind of good in the second game. They're not so great in the fourth. Anyway, let's just go look for Mia. So you can see we can move to the office like this. That smell. Blood. Didn't you just say that, Phoenix? <gasps> Sis? Someone's there. <gasps> Chief? Chief? Chief! Snake. <laughs> so yeah, um, Mia's dead. Already. Who are you? Strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. My body was still warm. I, I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. Until finally she was cold. Chief. Uh, basically, we want to look for some clues here. Slide? Oh, that's what that does. Okay. Encrusted with dried blood. How ironic that this pin murder weapon. Again. Some shards of glass are scattered on the floor. They seem to be the remains of a glass light stand. Chief. It's hard seeing her like this, but if there are any clues here. She was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. The thinker added to the court record. Hmm. There's some glass shards near the chief's body. There's a few pieces of the glass light stand lying broken in the back of the room. Glass shards added to the court record. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Hmm? A piece of paper? Must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? I mean, how did it get over there? Like, it, she was holding it, right? And there's like a big gap there. <laughs> huh? A word is written in blood on this scrap of paper. Maya? Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store, dated yesterday. Receipt added to the court record. I think it's enough snooping around for now. Better call the police. Never call the police, folks. And find out what that girl was doing here. Right, I better call the police. Don't, Phoenix, why are you doing this? That's funny. A few of the screws in the receiver are missing. Looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police? Please, come quick. W what was that? Someone screaming from outside the window? Uh, you might recognize that character if you're familiar with a certain uh, Fediverse personality. <laughs> yeah, this is what she's from. She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. There's a large building right across from the office. The Gatewater Hotel, a nice, luxurious place. Get it? Gatewater? Get it? It's like Watergate. <laughs> the phone received between two screws, I better not use it. I think I just need to leave the room now. Yeah. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on that sofa. Uh oh. I hope she didn't run on me. Oh, there she is. Yipes! Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay, I work here. Maya. Maya Fay. Maya. Fay? Maya? So Mia was writing this girl's name? Maybe I should show her the receipt. No, I, d I don't think you should do that, Phoenix. That sounds like a bad idea. Never thought to be used for evidence like this outside the courtroom. No, Phoenix, I don't. Uh. Anyway, when there's a person in the current room, you get these new options for talk, which lets you ch choose from 
pre-selected dialogue options and present, which lets you give them any piece of evidence you have. We actually do have to show Maya the receipt, even though it seems like a terrible idea. Um, we might talk to her first. What happened? She seems to be in shock. I don't want to disturb her, but I have to know. Well, you might disturb her by showing her the piece of paper with her name written in blood on it, so don't do that. Uh, excuse me? Can you tell me what happened? I came in, the room was dark. And sis... Sis? She was already dead. You're the chief. So, you're the chief's sister. I'm her younger sister. And you were here visiting this late at night? Yes. She said she wanted me to keep some evidence for her. Evidence? Yes. It was that clock. It was the thinker. You mean this one? Um, about the thinker. The, the thinker? That was... Oh, sis. Hmm, probably shouldn't have asked her about the murder weapon. I mean, yeah, that was a bad idea, but... You also shouldn't ask her about this piece of paper. Phoenix. Let's, let's ask her about this glass. This was lying next to the chief. I know, I saw it there too. I thought they might have been pieces of the light stand. Hmm, maybe. Never heard of a glass light stand before. Phoenix, you, you must know that there's a glass glass light stand in the office. Like, you've been here before. Now, I know he hasn't been there for long, but come on, dude. Uh, I got a badge. I'm sorry, I've never seen that before. Okay, so I actually do have to show Maya this piece of paper that I obviously shouldn't show Maya, because she'll freak out. So... I'm sorry, Maya. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. God, why would you say it like that? Phoenix, come on. Didn't you say a few minutes ago she died instantly? This... I hate this. <laughs> she wrote it on the back of this receipt. That's my name! Wh why Why would she write my name? Please, just calm down. Well, why would you show her that? God! I hate you, Phoenix. W why would Sis write my name? Uh-oh. Now I've done it. Yeah, you sure have. Wee-oo, 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 wee-oo. Nintendo wee-oo. <laughs> The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze, police! When they get cold? Alright, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Yeah, this is Detective Gumshoe. He's kind of, kind of adorable. Despite being a cop. He's like, the one good cop. He keeps constantly getting fired for trying to help you instead of the other cops. It's pretty cool. Gumshoe? What an odd name. Received a report from the building across the way, see? Got a person saying they saw a murder. It must have been that woman I saw. Anyway, I don't mind if you're moving one inch, okay? Ugh, one inch, okay? <laughs> great. Just great. Maya, wait, she wouldn't have... Nah. Whoa! Excuse me? Eek! This word Maya here mean anything to you? Um, that... That's my name. What? The victim drew this here note in her own blood, see? Gumshoe says see a lot in this one cutscene. I think he doesn't do that ever again. With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. The killer? I'm not... Case closed. You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. What? What? So yeah, Maya is the defendant in this case, as you might guess. Mia's younger sister Maya was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around, waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6, 9.07am, detention center, visitor's room. 
uh, they'll get a lot of mileage out of this particular backdrop. You'll notice as we play through the series how often they use this particular backdrop for something. I mean, always it's the detention center always, but there's a lot of people who you'll see here. Wow, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. We are the cops, what do you expect? Oh! It's you, the, the lawyer. G good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, you gonna be my attorney? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I better give it to her straight. It's up to you. Up to me? Yes. I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. They're never gonna believe me, are they? Even you, when you found me in the office, you looked at me like I'd done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I never thought. It's okay, I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? Uh, I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Ha! Huh. So, he crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Huh. Sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go to if I ever get in trouble now. I don't know, Mayor. Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. That's what she said. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. No, no it's okay. It's, it's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. And I think for the person who did this to Mia... I know. Oh. Precious baby Maya. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. Acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, there's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium. In training. A spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. Yes, Maya is a spirit medium. This is the truth. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes! Let's see. Uh, that morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes, that clock shaped like the thinker. Larry made. How could that have been evidence in a case? Um, right, she said something about that. I remember. Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Uh, her own voice? Yes. I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone. You recorded it. Yeah. I forgot how to delete those things. So you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone? Let's hear it. Right. Oh. Uh, I just remembered that detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Oh, right. Of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. Uh... Like, people in detention centers allowed to give you pieces of paper like that? I, I feel like that would be something they wouldn't allow. I don't know. So you're an acolyte. A uh, medium in training? That's right. The Fey family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. <laughs> Wait a second. You said the Fey family? So me was into this stuff too? Of course. She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class too. Uh, I had no idea. Hmm. Wait. 
What? So, you're a real, honest-to-goodness spirit medium? With ESP and all that? Yes, in training. Well, can't you contact me as spirit then? You can just ask her who killed her. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm, I thought that would be too easy. Um. Huh? Something the matter? Um, I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And, well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask and represent me? Hmm. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? Uh, I see. <laughs> Don't worry, leave it to me. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if this guy refuses? They told me if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until 4 o'clock this afternoon. And visiting hours almost up. I'd better hurry. Right, I'll be back. Apparently state-appointed attorneys are just the worst things ever, because any time they're brought up, it's like, that can never happen, that would ruin you and get you guilty. Uh... Also, yeah, um... The women of the Fae family can do channeling, the men can't. Uh, it's never really made clear whether that means... Whether they actually mean women, or if they mean AFAB people. I like to think that... One of the reasons you can figure out you're trans in the Fae family is if... You can miraculously channel spirits despite being quote-unquote a boy. Cause that would be, you know, a really funny way to realize that you're a girl. <laughs> It's like, oh, oh, okay, I can channel spirits. I see. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're gonna go over to Fan Co. Law Offices now, um, like this. September 6th, Fan Co. Law Offices. The office is filled with police officers. Gross. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey, you there. This is a crime scene, pal, no trespassing. See, now Gumshoe is talking like himself. He's saying pal instead of C. I don't know why he was saying C earlier. Um, sorry. Don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that Butts guy, aren't you? No, no. Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Uh, I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That Butts guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you were... Doesn't matter what you pick here, but... I may as well do it right. Um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe? Right, at your service. Hang on, that's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. And don't go calling me Dick. Hey Dick, get over here. <laughs> yes sir. Be right there. Um, ahem. You're her lawyer, right, pal? Um... Detective Gumshoe, I think the other cop wanted you. You might want to go over there or not. If you got business here, you better do it quick. Whew, he thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. Okay, let's talk to him. Uh, Mia, about Ms. Faye, did you do an autopsy? Hmm? You want to know the results, eh? Why don't you look at me like that, pal? It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. Alright, alright. You can see the report, but that's all. Autopsy report add to the court record. So yeah, that's some important evidence, obviously. How about Maya? Um, about Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you aren't gonna win. Why do you say that? The city's put Prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth. I'm sure you know what that means, you being a lawyer and all. Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? 
I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain, he doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Oh, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So, Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. <laughs> Remember that line for later, it gets funny. Of course, there are rumours of back alley dealings and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. Okay, uh, we want to show this note to Detective Gumshoe because he does have Maya's phone. I was wondering, did you see Maya Faye's cell phone? Oh, that? I have that. Do you think you'd give it back? Sure, I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh oh, he's on to me. Uh, let's tell him gay. Okay, I can't be straight with this guy. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I ship it. Something the matter? Oh no, um... Th that, that carrying strap on the cell phone. This? Hmm? It says, The Steel Samurai, Warrior of neo Oldie Tokyo. The Steel Samurai, that action hero on TV? Yeah, you say that strap is a collector's item. She was worried it might get lost if it went down to the precinct. Is that what she said? Um, yes. Okay, pal. I wrote down all the numbers she called anyway. Here you go. Seems you didn't notice the recorded conversation. Maya's cell phone received from Detective Gumshoe. Check the court record to hear the recorded conversation. I guess I've asked all the questions I need to. You all done, pal? Um, yes, thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you better not. No influencing the witness with your loyally ways, pal. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. The witness? Yeah, Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me her name. Miss May, huh? So you've sent her home already, then? Haha! <laughs> You're trying your loyally tricks on me now! She's not to go outside her room until the trial. So, she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try to get a detective for the confirmation. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. <laughs> okay, we can go to the hotel now. We can also go to Grossburg. Gr Gross... Gross... Grossburg. The law officers. <laughs> uh, we'll go to the law officers first, I reckon. September 6th. Grossberg Law Officers. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention run an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Okay, yeah, there's nothing I can do here yet. So, to the hotel it is. September 6, Gatewater Hotel, room 303. I love this tune. <laughs> well, hello there, handsome. Uh, hi. Smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. Tee hee! Memo to self. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's also exciting and hard to contain myself. Ooh, let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that's to cross examine this one. The late summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the Fay and her law officer's building, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize a face from this distance, though. There's a screwdriver over here. There's a screwdriver stuck in this drawer. I wonder what's inside. Let's take a look. Hey! Uh, hey! What are you doing? No touching! <laughs> look how creepy she is. <laughs> look at her face! <laughs> She's so angry! 
<laughs> Ooh, bad boy. Y you really shouldn't pry in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside the drawer. Okay, we now have to talk to her, which is useful. What you witnessed? Do you think you could tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Ooh, observe, incident. You sound just like a lawyer in the movies. I like a man with a big vocabulary. <laughs> uh, oh, better not encourage her. Uh, you know that thing that occur, um, happened the other day? The, the bad thing. What did you say when it happened? I don't suppose you could tell me about it? Pretty please? Let me see. Um, well, dream on. If you want to know, you'll just have to come to court tomorrow, Mr. Lawyer. Oh boy. Um, could you... Just who exactly are you? Oh, Mr. Lawyer. Are you hitting on me? N n no hhey, I'm just doing my job here. <laughs> you know, you're cute when you blush. Believe me, this is the first time in my life I've blushed this much. Um, <laughs> right, can you just tell me what it is you do? Well, no, tee-hee. <laughs> you had your little hopes up, didn't you? Oh boy. Yeah, Miss May's kind of obnoxious. <laughs> See, there are two glasses on the table. Is someone staying here with you? Ooh, what amazing powers of observation. You must be one of those famous detectives like on television. Oh, no, not me. I'm uh, just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, why don't you go look for clues in the garbage? Hmm? Miss May doesn't like nosy little lawyers. Hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah, but you can't get much evidence from her. Um... I think that's about all we can do. So let's uh, head back to the Grossberg offices now. There we go. Hmm. Seems like Mr. Grossberg is out. Well, maybe I should just wait here for him to come back. Ah, uh, hem. If that wasn't the most over-the-top clearing with the threat I've ever heard. Aha. Uh -huh. So, you're the one they say has been looking for me. Uh, yes, that's me. He looks even grander than I imagined. Hmm? That badge on your collar. Ah, uh, so you're a lawyer, are you now? Y yes well, y yes And what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please, proceed. Not busy? Then how come no one can get in touch with you? Hmm? Something the matter? You came to see the one and only Marvin Grossberg, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out with it. Uh, uh, well, uh, sir, actually, it's about Maya, Maya Faye. Uh, y yes, Maya Faye, go on. Hmm? What a strange reaction. Ah, cha cha. I'm really quite busy here, son. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's quite impossible. Oh, wait, wait a second. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? Oh, ahem. A anyway. I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. Sorry, end of discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? How can you just refuse like that? Please, tell me why you won't take the case. Hmm? Ahem, <laughs> well, you see, it's just, uh, I'm busy, you see. But the client is Mia Fey's sister. Hmm? Ahem. Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry, goodbye. Creep. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. Think not. <laughs> huh? Did you say something? I think not, I said. Well, what do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on that particular case. Terribly sorry, my boy. Why? <laughs> I kept the accent. I <laughs> didn't. It was just. That wasn't good. <laughs> uh, I. I cannot say. I beg your pardon, but could you leave now? I have nothing more to discuss with you. What's going on here? 
Oh, I guess I can try to talk about other things. Mia? How did you know Mia Faye? She worked here a long time ago. Quite the apprentice, that one. Learned my techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. A mission? You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never looked back, that one. That's uh, quite a painting. It's the one with the guy with the hat back there. Aha, you noticed. It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? The color of the sky, the hue of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. It's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it, not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale. I'm not buying. Jeez. <laughs> Okay, um, we have to go back and tell Maya that, uh, we have a problem. Because, uh, Marvin won't take her case. Or Mr. Grossberg. September 6th, 3.42pm, the Tension Center Visitor's Room. Hiya. Oh, you're back! Did you find the lawyer? Um, well, what do I tell her? Well, see, just be honest. I, I really don't think you should use that guy. He... Didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. What really happened? You don't mean he refused to help? Uh, I see. I've been abandoned then. Oh, baby. She looks how sad she is. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, I, I know it must be hard. No, no, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see. Uh, that morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the thinker clock that Larry made. It practically qualifies as a serial murderer by now. I mean, technically it was two different clocks. It wasn't the same clock each time, but it was, it was the same like design, I guess. So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around 9pm. Sorry, 9 o'clock. It is 9pm, but it's 9 o'clock. <laughs> the lights were off and I could smell blood. Then I found her. My sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young, and I don't know where my mother is. Don't know? So she could still be alive? Moon and my family have been mediums for generations. They say a lot of spiritual power runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in an incident. There was a man, and he... he... he ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer and she left the mountain. So, you live by yourself? Yes, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become independent or I would lose my powers. I feel bad for her, all by herself up on that mountain. So, who was this man who um, ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir. Everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out of leads, and they were getting desperate. Wait, they didn't use a spirit medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to try to contact the victim. Wow. So, what happened? The case was solved, we thought. You thought? The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. <gasps> Police's consultation with a medium had all been carried out in secret, of course. But a man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that her mother was a fraud and the media jumped on it big time. She, my mother, became the laughing stock of the nation. I see. White. Excuse me? White? That was his name, my sister told me. White. Hmm. Just a little longer now before the state-approved lawyer comes, I guess. Hmm. 
4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? Hell no. I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you whether you want me to or not. Why? Why? Well... No one is as sad as a person without any friends. I mean... How deep of you to say that? <laughs> That's a really cheesy line. I know, I've been there a long time ago. Why did I ever come lure in the first place? Because someone has to look out for people who have no one on their side. Maya, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. That's so kind of you. <laughs> well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. R right, thank you. Whew, she smiled at last. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? Yes! And I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? It's a deal. Oh, whoops. Just what was inside that strange woman's drawer. It's when I tried to look into the drawer that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Okay, so we have to go back to the hotel now. Uh, and look in the drawer again, basically. Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are? Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment, at your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the, uh, facilities. If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah. Wait, no, hey! Why does it seem like every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to snoop around a bit. Ah, oh, I almost forgot. Yeah! Y you came back quick! I might ask you to inform Miss May there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. Oh, right, sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? White. We didn't need a flashback. We just, this just happened. That was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined me and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? Okay, anyway. Now we're going to look in here because May's not, Miss May's not here. There's a screwdriver sticking out of that half-open drawer. Now it's my chance to see what's inside. <gasps> what do we have here? A wiretap? Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? I mean, it is the Gatewater Hotel, so what did you expect? Wiretap added to the court record. There is definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all this, I know it. Alright. I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, bellboy, still there? Uh-oh, time to scram. I look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. And that's the end of the first episode. Um, chapter, I mean. The episode is a bit longer. Uh, anyway, yeah, that is Turnabout Sisters Investigation Day 1. Uh, it went for 43 minutes... I think the investigation episodes will probably be a bit longer than the courtroom episodes because there's a lot less, like, flow. Instead of it being one scripted sequence, you have to move around and go to the right rooms and stuff. Um, but yeah, um, so that's, that's our first investigation segment of the game. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, next time, we'll be doing the first courtroom segment of Turnabout Sisters. So, um, look forward to that. Thanks for watching. Bye!